Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want, or why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Yeah. Yeah. I have food to eat that you know nothing about. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. I want to talk today about soul food. Duncan, give me 15 minutes. Just when I get to 15 minutes, just raise your hand. What, whatever I don't say in 15 minutes, I ain't going to say. Amen. Now, how you going to give me 15 minutes if you ain't even looked at your watch? Amen. Deke, you got me. Give me 15 minutes. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today about soul food, soul food. Just the title makes me salivate, soul food. I grew up on soul food, and I miss soul food. Now, in New York today, we got a lot of Haitian restaurants, we got a lot of Jamaican restaurants, Caribbean restaurants, but we ain't got no good soul food restaurants. And, and when you do get a soul food restaurant, you go in and they faking and fronting. You order the greens and they bring you some greens with some smoked turkey wings you know that ain't soul food. Because you know if it ain't got the ham hock in it, mama, it ain't soul food. I was talking to Deacon Ogan Mola and I was telling him down south how we used to say when people were doing really well that they were living high on the hog. That's because the white folk kept all of the meat that was high on the hog. We got to eat the meat that was low on the hog. Oh, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Say amen anyhow. Yeah, we ate the pig feet and the chitlins and the hog moths. Oh, somebody give him praise and glory. In this house. We didn't, we didn't have a lot. We, we, amen, we didn't get the ham and the shoulder roast. The pork chops and all, no, no, no. We, we ate low on the hog. Uh, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, but Deke, our mothers and our grandmothers could take a little nothing and turn it into a gourmet meal. Grandmama would take a little pot liquor, Lord have mercy, <laughs> with a little cornbread, and you dip the cornbread in the pot liquor. And you ain't never ate nothing that good. Oh, somebody slap your mama. Lord have mercy. That kind of good. That's what I'm talking about. We took nothing, DeVito. Took nothing. And they turned it into something that was, and I miss it. Now, I know we can't have soul food like we used to. Well, soul food is based on pork. Even in our vegetables, it's got pork. Amen. Amen. Donna, if you're going to make a potato pie. 
Amen. Use a little pork grease in it. Make that crust come out good and flaky. If God made something better than a pig, he kept it in heaven. Now, it ain't no good for your body, and I wouldn't suggest that you go out there and eat no soul food. Because it ain't never been good for our bodies, Lord have mercy. But God told Peter, everything I made is good. They make it, uh, they mess it up in the way they process it and cure it and put chemicals and salt in it. But amen, amen. We came up and, and we call it soul food. It may not have been good to the body, but it was sure enough good to the soul. You sit down to the table, Dr. Murray, and just hurt yourself. Y'all know how it was down in North and South Carolina. Don't act like it's just us Texas folk. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But here today, Jesus said, no, there's another kind of soul food. I want to say three quick things. I tell somebody, give me the time how I'm doing. Amen. I got 10 minutes. Amen. Three quick things in 10 minutes, and we're going to be finished. We're going to have communion, take up the offering, and we'll be ready to go. Somebody say amen. 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 Number one was the nature of the food. They came and they said, could somebody have gone and gotten him food while we were away getting food for him? And he said, no, I have some food that you don't know anything about. It was the nature of the food. It was something about what he, amen, what gave him nourishment, what gave him sustenance. He had food that we didn't know anything about. So many times today, Day. People, amen, they look at the material side of life and everything is about materialism, about their cars or their clothes or their house or the money that they have or the designer names that's written on their clothes. But I don't need no designer names on my underwear. What would I look like wearing some underwear named Calvin Klein? My name ain't Calvin Klein. I don't want no man's name on my underwear. But this culture drives us to be materialistic. He was never materialistic. Even in our churches, I saw an article the other day about this preacher down there in Texas with that mega church. What's his name? Joel Osteen. Ten things you wouldn't know Joel Osteen owns. I refused to read the article, but I saw the cover of the article. He was standing there next to a Rolls Royce. And I said, really, is this the Jesus that we follow today? That we have allowed the culture, even the culture, to slip, slip into our values in the church? Jesus wasn't a Rolls Royce kind of man. If you remember, he was born in a manger where animals relieved themselves. He said the foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the son of man doesn't know where he's going to stay every night. You know, he didn't ride in the Rolls Royces of his day when he did need locomotion into Jerusalem. He borrowed a donkey and told the man, I'll give it to you when I'm finished. And he didn't even have money to pay his taxes, but he said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and render unto God what is God. So he told the disciples to go fish and pull the fish out of the water. You will find a coin in its mouth. Take that coin and go pay Caesar. No, he was not about this rabid materialism, what you have and bling bling and showing off. That wasn't Jesus. Even look at him when he's buried. He's buried in a borrowed tomb. He didn't have a burial plan. 
He didn't have any uh, possessions to leave behind. All he owned was the little tunic on his back and the sandals on his feet. The nature of his food was different. What made him different was that his food was spiritual food. His food was different and his hunger was different. He says, I've got some meat. I've got some food. You don't know anything about my food is to do my father's will. That's what gives me nourishment. That's what gives me sustenance. Uh, you know, when you are so focused in on God, you begin to see the spiritual things and your desires become God's desires. Your hunger becomes like his hunger. Jesus was hungry for one thing and that was that every woman and girl every boy and man would come to know God he came to give us a road map back to God he came to give us a GPS on how to get to heaven and nothing could deter him jewels and diamonds didn't matter to him fancy cars didn't matter to him big houses didn't matter to him his hunger was to do God's will and let me tell you something the closer you get to God God, the more of this world will mean less and less to you and more of God the spiritual things will mean the most to you you begin to hunger what God hungers. You begin to want what God wants uh, instead of going to the club on Friday nights. Uh, Lord have mercy. You'll wake up on Sunday morning and say, I want to go to the house of the Lord and sing praises to my God because he changes your hunger. He changes your desire. I have meat to eat, he said. It is not worldly. It is spiritual. His hunger was different. And our hunger should be different. Our desire should be like his. To make sure that every boy and man, every girl and woman will come into a knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the closer we get to God, the more stupid. I got five minutes left. You know, Aubrey got me to watching boxing again. After Mike Tyson, I just couldn't watch boxing. I don't like it when there's not a great American heavyweight fighter. They had all these behemoths, these big old 6'9", 6'11", 300 pounds. Mike Tyson never fought over 200. Ali never over 220. They had these big giant men in the ring. That's not boxing. So I got tired of it, but Aubrey started talking to me about it, and I've been watching the boxing. Uh, YouTube is so wonderful. Thank God for YouTube. YouTube and Google. But I come across a, a video of Floyd Mayweather, highest paid athlete in the world multiple world champion. The video showed the cameras following him into his house. And the whole video was just about the things that he has. His five Rolls Royces, his Bugattis. I had to go look up, what is a Bugatti? <laughs> I heard of Bugatti motorcycles. I didn't know they made cars also. And then he began to talk about his children's golden chains and the fancy cars he had bought his son at 16. Yeah. And I said, you know, this bothers me. Finally, they took you in and showed you his collection of watches. All of them just gaudy with diamonds. He has made over a billion dollars in the ring. His last fight against Manny Pacquiao, his last fight alone, he grossed $350 million for 30 minutes of work. Yeah. 
So you got to give him his credit. He's brilliant. He's one of the greatest boxers of all time. But I'm saying to myself, why isn't he bragging about how he used his money to help some folk? Why isn't he bragging about scholarships he's given the kids that didn't have a chance to go to college? Why doesn't he brag about it? I'm not saying he doesn't do it. I hope he does. But, you know, if, if I wanted to brag, that's what I'd want to brag about. Your, your hunger has to be for something different. Not just because I thought about how stupid and childish it is. When you get to the end of your life and you realize that you surrounded your life with things and you can't carry them with you. It's not about the things. It's about the hunger in your soul to be the kind of person God wants you to be. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, my, my, my satisfaction is, is pleasing God. What turns me on is pleasing God. Sometimes I forget about the material side because I'm so locked in on God. You know what? We need some folk who will lock in on God. He said, I want to do his will and I want to finish it. And so he healed the sick, but he was not finished. And he raised the dead, but he was not finished. He gave sight to the blind, and he made the deaf to hear and the mute to talk, but he was not finished. He made the lame to walk, but he wasn't finished. Uh, he fed the multitudes with little fish and five loaves of bread, but he was not finished. Uh, he walked on water and told the storm to be still, and the storm was still, but he still wasn't finished. Uh, he met a woman at the well and told her all about herself, but he wasn't finished. But one day, he went to Calvary's rugged cross, uh, and there he gave his life, and he, he shared his blood and he who knew no sin became sin. He became your sin and your sin and my sin and her sin and his sin. He became our sin uh, and then the father would not even look upon this vile creature that the son had become when he was covered in all of our sin and it was only then, only then would he say Lord have mercy. Now it's finished. Uh, salvation is secure forgiveness is secure a second chance is secure regeneration is secure justification is secure righteousness is secure it is finished my meat is to do my father's will my meat is to tell men and women there is a way back to God let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me for in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go and prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also whether I go you know and the way you know Thomas said Lord we don't know where you're going so how in the world could we know the way Jesus said I am the road map I am the GPS. Uh, I'll show you the way back to the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man comes to the Father unless he comes by me. Uh, that's what I've come to do. Uh, I've come to do my Father's will. Uh, I've come to open the gates of glory so that every man and woman and boy and girl uh, can live in eternity with God. Uh, and he wasn't satisfied uh, until it was finished. Uh, but I'm so glad I'm so glad. I'm so glad he died for me. But early one Sunday morning, he got up. Oh, yes. I am he who was dead. But I'm finished now. I've got the keys of death and hell in my hand. I'm finished now. 
Ah, let your life be more than just your material possessions. As you get closer to him, your hunger will be for the things of God. Let the church say amen. amen.